You too can be prosperous. Studies in Prosperity by Robert A. Russell. Page V. I am prosperity. Now, lay this book down and repeat these words to yourself 100 times. Repeat this practice at intervals until the words and their meaning become your basic thought pattern, an integral part of you. Read the book thoughtfully and meditatively in order to share your secrets of achieving prosperity that are revealed in these pages. Chapter 1. The Prosperity Idea. Where is the money coming from? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to get a new car? Why don't I get a better job? Why don't I get on faster? Why don't I get a decent salary? Why can't I be successful? Why don't I get ahead? Why am I always broke? Do you really want to know? Do you really want to do something about it? Do you really want to throw off the shackles of limitation and poverty? Then prepare yourself for one of the most thrilling and interesting experiments you have ever made. When you picked up this book, you picked up one of the most important and valuable documents you have ever held in your hand. You picked up a practical and useful technique that has enriched and revitalized the lives of thousands. You picked up a formula that has abundantly demonstrated itself. You picked up a method of demonstration that will work for anyone who will put it in practice. You picked up an idea that can transform, change and improve everything in your world. If you follow the instructions on page V of this book and the mental soil is right, you started a vibration that will make all your dreams and wishes come true. You started a train of causation that will spread like wildfire until it touches every corner of your world. You started a flow of prosperity action that would drive every condition of punery, want and lack from your life if it is not impeded by thoughts of an opposite character. You open the door to the source of all achievement, wealth, power, success, discovery, invention, and material gain. This ideal is so big, so powerful, so irresistible in its action that it will magnetize everything in your life and cause everything to vibrate in harmony with it. It will draw success, work, opportunities, and beneficial activities of every sort to you. Its vibration is so strong that it will demagnetize everything unlike itself. Its power is so great that it will penetrate and dispel every inharmonious condition. It spreads light, its vitality, its riches to every part of the world. It is omnipotent, it is omniscient. If you are lost in a maze of false beliefs, the idea will bring you to your goal. If you are in the poorhouse, it will take you out. If you are financially flat on your back, it will lift you up. If you are at the bottom, it will bring you to the top. If your faith is weak, it will make you strong. If your attitude is right, it will accomplish all things through you. It will activate good, amplify power, increase income, attract opportunities, release riches, cancel debt, stimulate business, enlarge consciousness, prevent failure, strengthen faith, nourish aspiration, clarify vision, generate peace, heal disease, solve problems, increase ability, stimulate imagination, fulfill desires, recoup losses, remove barriers, eliminate hardships, release substance, dispel fear, neutralize worry, fire ambition, or harmonize discord, destroy doubt, close gaps, intensify uh, realization, integrate the mind, better conditions, purify judgment, substantiate claims, break fixations, loosen tension, open doors, and penetrate appearances, reverse negatives. In short, it will realize the fulfillment of all of your desires. Prosperity, one single word. Think of it as power. Think of it as far reaching influence. The moment that idea begins to work for you, everything in your life begins to change. That moment, everything begins to improve. It is the key to your well being. It is God breaking through to reveal to you the glories and riches of his kingdom. Say over again, I am prosperity. Millions slave for this idea. A few are supported by it. Do you see the difference? The laborer works for this idea. The capitalist lets it work for him. One supports it. The other is supported by it. Is there any difference then between the laborer and the capitalist? The only difference is the relationship. One is a servant of the idea. The other is served by it. Ideas are seeds that come to us from anywhere and everywhere. They float through the air looking for the right mental soil. The right soil is consciousness of one kind an unadulterated consciousness in which there are no denials and no contradictions. 
Just as vegetable seed to grow properly must have soil that is free of weeds, ideas in order to flourish must have soil that is free of contradictory and opposing thoughts. Our problem is not with the seed as Jesus brought out in the parable of the sower, but with the soil, remove the obstructions of fear, worry, and doubt, and the idea takes root and grows to maturity. What is it you want? An apartment, a position, more money or better health. Then drop your idea into the fertile medium of the subconscious. Plant it deep. Cultivate it with recognition. Fertilize it with concentration. Nourish it with faith and activate it with your consciousness. Condition your consciousness and there is nothing that you cannot have. All things are yours and ye are Christ and Christ is God. If ye abide in me, that is, if you enter into and share my quality of consciousness and my words, my thoughts abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Do you believe this promise? Do you catch the impact of it? It means that our whole work is to keep our thoughts pure and our consciousness true. If divine substance is momentarily shaping itself around our thought and materializing in our life the thing about which we think, we must keep our minds off the troubles and keep them centered on God. Now, repeat the affirmations, I am prosperity. Say the words meaningfully. If you think prosperity all the time and keep every negative thought out of your mind, prosperity is bound to be manifested in your life. But how can I think prosperity all the time when there are so many other things to think about, you ask? You can do it by making prosperity your basic or fundamental thought. That is, the master of your primary thought from which all other thoughts take their color, tone and trend and quality. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a man is what he thinks about all day long. The character of your objective thought will be determined by the primary or subjective trend of your thinking. The trend is the matrix or fixed mode through which all of your thoughts pass. Worry usually begins in some small anxiety in the mind and becomes basic or habitual through repetition. We repeat the same worry day by day until it becomes a habit or an automatic expression in our life. Habits make a path or channel through which our thoughts actions travel. The channel enlarges as the thought is repeated and gets deeper and wider until the habit tends to dominate all our thoughts, actions and character. This is why. A man is what he thinks about all day long. If the basic thought of a man is wary, everything in his life will be tinctured by the progeny of wary. Fear, timidity, uncertainty, depression, irresolution, doubt, bashfulness, indecisiveness, and lack of confidence. You have heard about the atmosphere of homes, buildings, towns, and communities that is made up of the collective thought of the people who live there. But the atmosphere of the man is what he thinks about all day long. It is that subtle something that interprets him to others. If his basic thought is poverty or lack, others will know it and treat him accordingly. How then shall we change these established habits of thinking? by adapting new basic thoughts that will crystallize themselves into more productive convictions. Let this same man fill his mind with thoughts, assurances, and ideas of faith with self-confidence, courage, determination. Let him surround himself with an atmosphere of success, achievement, and empower. Let him radiate qualities of fearlessness, trust, optimism, strength, and self-reliance. He will attract the best from everything and everybody. He will inspire confidence and compel attention. Believing in himself, he will inspire confidence in others. The new habit pattern will not only release the power of God into his consciousness, but will change the whole color, tone, and character of his life. Instead of wary, he will generate faith. But wait a minute, says a thoughtful student. If you substitute one basic thought for another and make no disposition of the offended thought, you have two basic thoughts instead of one. That is true. Then, how do you keep from slipping back into the old basic thought of worry? By tuning the old habit completely out and by deliberately and persistently taking the new pattern of confidence and power into your conscious content. The nature of habit is brought out clearly by Edward C. Bills in his booklet, The Law of Financial Success. If you have to walk over a field through a forest, you know how natural it is for you to choose the clearest path in preference to the less worn ones and greatly in preference to stepping out across the field or through the woods and making a new path. And the line of mental action is precisely the same. It is movement along the lines of the least resistance, passage over the well-worn path. Habits are created by repetition. 
and are formed in accordance to a natural law observable in animate things and some would say in inanimate things as well. As an instance of the latter, it is pointed out that the piece of paper once folded in a certain manner will fold along the same lines the next time. And all users of sewing machines or other delicate pieces of mechanisms know that as a machine or instrument is once broken in, so will it tend to run thereafter. The same law is also observable in the case of musical instruments. Clothing or gloves form unto creases according to the person using them. And these creases, once formed, will always be in effect, notwithstanding repeated pressings. Rivers and streams of water cut their course through the land and thereafter flow along the habit course. The law is in operation everywhere. The way to eradicate the old process of worry is to form a bigger concept of confidence. As the confidence thought grows, the mental path of worry will gradually fill up the disuse. The old path will grow less and less distinct until it gradually disappears. Do you see why this subject is so important? When you know how to change your basic thought, you know how to change everything in your life and are well on your way to something better and more productive and good. Remember, however, that Rome was not built in a day and that is going to take some time and patience to make new mental creases. The metaphysicians call this process changing subjective trends. You will see results when the new conviction becomes deeper and stronger than the older one. Once a new pattern is outlined and adopted, it must be repeated again and again with great conviction and feeling. You must make it the intimate, vital, predominating and every living quality of your thought. Say to yourself, I am confidence, I am prosperity, I am power, I am success. Feel what you say, feel it deeply and with great joy. Dwell on your statements until they are firmly synchronized with your emotional nervous system. There are several rules that will aid you in doing this. Refuse to use old habit path under any circumstances. Keep your thought changed out of negative paths and hold it to the positive. Change the new thought action with hope, power, belief, conviction, and determination when you express it. Make your new pattern as clear, strong, deep, and positive as you can. Make opportunities for traveling over this new path as often as possible. The thing we want to accomplish is twofold, to obliterate the offending thought pattern and to drop a new form into the pool of subconscious cerebration and so the unimpeded idea can take form and substance. It is a process much like dropping a key or other metal object into a body of salt water. If you have ever been to the Great Salt Lake, you have probably made this experiment yourself. You drop a metal key into the water and after time, the salt will form itself into a perfect pattern around the key. Consciously or subconsciously, we must have the metal equivalent pattern of the thing desired. In this case, is prosperity. The law of prosperity is already within our minds, pressing to act. Our job is to release it for our daily needs, to open channels for its expression. Let us first think about the mental equivalent in the process. This is just another term for basic thought pattern or model. Having examined and rid ourselves of all apparent opposition, we are now ready to synchronize the, mo the new model with the creative forces of the subconscious mind. We are ready to drop the key into the water, so to speak. The spirit descended into the pool and troubled the waters and the healing took place. The object, the object of course, is to get the new idea out of your head conscious content and into the soul or subconscious mind. The law does not work for the thing you want while you are holding your model in the upper or conscious mind. It works for fulfillment only when the idea holds you. St. Paul said, let Christ be performed in you. Let the idea form in you a consciousness of itself. Don't hold the idea, but let the idea hold you. Do you hear? That is very important. Do not affirm unless your affirmation is backed up with a corresponding emotion. Many students fail because they do not understand this principle. We demonstrate our good by loosening it into the law and not by parenting affirmations or mouthing decrees. The law responds to us by corresponding to our states of mind, that is. It operates through our mental equivalents or beliefs. When the principle of prosperity is set in motion through affirmations and acceptance, the law of life operates through it. Why must the new thought pattern be 
couched in the present tense. Why do we say I am prosperity instead of I shall be prosperous? Why must we claim something we do not have? Life always works in the present tense by direct affirmation. Jesus declared, I am this or I am that or I am other thing. And immediately the thing decreed began to form according to law. To say that we shall be prosperous is well and good, but we are putting our prosperity off until some future time. To affirm our good in the presence is to cause it to appear. Law plus acceptance plus belief is the pattern. If the idea of prosperity is to become a power in our lives, we must inwardly accept it as a present fact. Our thought, will, imagination, and feeling must agree with what we say. Now, I'm going to ask you to start building your basic thought in prosperity without further delay. Center your thought again around our affirmation. I am prosperity. This is the nucleus that is to grow and multiply indefinitely. It must be backed up with our earnest faith and desire. Your idea of prosperity may be a better position, more income, a nice vacation, an agreeable companion, or more health. It may be something you do not have but need desperately. The law says that you can have anything you desire if you believe that you already have it. That is, if you have a subjective acceptance of anything desired. Now, contemplate that for a few moments. Not the money to meet the mortgage, not the new car, not the new house, but the basic idea. I am prosperity. You are going to change your consciousness out of the old mode of lack and into the new mode of plenty. You are going to create a new habit, atmosphere, and new thought inclinations. That is your big responsibility in the process. You are going to eradicate a mental equivalent of lack by substituting a mental equivalent of plenty. You are going to start this idea of prosperity, revolving on its access at such a high rate of speed that it will draw into your life all good things you need. Now, put the book down, close your eyes, relax, and repeat the affirmation slowly and with pointed purpose 100 times. Take it easy and feel your pattern deeply. Realize that with each repetition, your new idea is going further and further underground until it perfectly integrated with the creative mind. It now has the power to attract itself all the elements that it needs for its fulfillment. The rest of the process is a matter of sustained attention, faith, feeling, acting, and seeing. See the new idea clearly, realize it, feel it, and accept it. Speed it up with your belief. Keep it alive with your faith. Feed it with your fresh, rich, powerful, and life-giving images. Give it motion, motion through action. Act it out. I am prosperity. Realize how rich you are. Keep the prosperity ideas and thoughts circulating freely through your mind. See them generating abundance, opportunities, and success. Do not allow negative ideas to creep in and short-circuit your good. I am prosperity. Keep repeating it until it goes underground and takes form. I am prosperity. Feel it. Rejoice in it. Bless it. Love it. Speed it up. Speed up the rate of vibration by telling your subconscious mind that you are already prosperous. If you want prosperity, don't say I want to get rid of poverty. Be affirmative and positive. Say that. Say what you mean and mean what you say. If your thought is filled with the idea of getting rid of poverty, you are increasing poverty in your consciousness. Your basic thought is abundance, opulence, plenty, and you are going to think and speak of nothing else. Oh, yes, I know the rent is coming due and you have a lot of unpaid bills, but you are not going to think those things now. You are going to think prosperity, no prosperity, feel prosperity and nothing else. You are going to etch prosperity so deeply in your mind that nothing else can come into your life. That is what we mean by building new mental equivalent. It is creating a new basic thought and in potion with a flood in your life with good. It is making a new path for God and then getting everything out of his way. It is taking everything in, into your consciousness that is unlike perfection and trading it for something better and more desirable. The problem is not with life, but with the use you are making of it. If you would change your condition from poverty to prosperity, you must change your position in this law. Seven day assignment. Are you ready for an assignment? Then here is what you want to do. For the next seven days, I want you to work deliberately and with persistence on this one idea. I am prosperity. I want you to try to think of nothing else and to feel nothing else for that period of time. This doesn't mean that you will get your demonstration in seven days, although it could happen. I want you to watch your attitude, though. 
your thought, your feeling and conversation during that period of time to see that you do not once revert to your old way of thinking and feeling. Know what you want and declare it with such convincing tones that the subconscious will go right to work to materialize your desires. Now, let's repeat the assignment. This week, beginning right now, you are going to take the idea, I am prosperity, and try to think of nothing else for seven days. If negative or contradictory thoughts creep in, catch yourself and refuse to entertain them. If that sinus or arthritis starts to bother you, if the job proves troublesome, if debt or, or the housing problem presses you, reject the thought. Say, I am not going to think about illness, that job, those unpaid bills, that apartment. I am going to think only wealth health. I am prosperity. This is the new thought pattern and habit of my life. It is the basic thought by which I test every other thought. I shall weave it so tightly in the fabric of my consciousness that no, no thread of the old process of poverty can find room. I am prosperity. Say it over and over. Think of it. Dream it. Make it the intimate, powerful, and ever living quality of your thought. Say to yourself, I am prosperity. I am abundance. I am opulence. I am rich. I am successful. Feel these new patterns. Feel them earnestly, deeply, and convincingly. Feel them unceasingly. Thank God for them. Rejoice in them. Thrill to them. Let them sink deeply in your emotional nervous system. If you are serious about changing the automatic expression of your life, I want to give you a little suggestion that will help you. I have found the association method to be a great boon in the establishment of new habits, and I'm sure you will too. Take an article that you handle many times a day, like a watch, a pen, a pencil, a toothbrush, brush, a razor, knife, fork, spoon, drinking glass, tower, key, and, and every time you pick it up, you say to yourself, I am thinking of prosperity. I am thinking of plenty. I am thinking of abundance. You turn the key into the ignition of your automobile a dozen or more times a day. Use it as an act or as an association process. Let it remind you that you are prosperous. Accept the reminder when you unlock the door to your home, when you open the safe, when you open the letter opener on your mail, when you stamp your letters, when you spend your money, when you put on new clothes, when you put on a tie, when you wash the dishes, when you sew, when you sleep. If you can do this intelligently and systematically for a period of seven days, you will be amazed at the beneficial changes and blessings that will come into your life.